Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about tuberculosis or as it's commonly known as TB. So first of all what is tuberculosis? Tuberculosis of course is a pulmonary pathology that we're going to discuss but we have to know that currently tuberculosis is an endemic which means that it's found in a restricted population even though tuberculosis is infectious we cannot say that tuberculosis is an epidemic which means the word epidemic means that it's an outbreak of a certain disease that uh, infects a very high number of people in a certain amount of time tuberculosis was like that in the 18th and 19th centuries till the discovery of the bacterial causes of tuberculosis in 1882 by the German Dr. Koch and this is why the bacteria that cause TB are called Koch bacillus or Koch bacilli so Koch bacilli. Now those bacilli their name is mycobacterium or mycobacteria tuberculosis. Mycobacteria tuberculosis. There are other bacteria that can cause tuberculosis as well but this is the most common one. So those bacteria are rod-shaped Bacilli means rod shaped. So they are rod shaped bacteria. And myco is related to mucus secretion. So on the bacterial wall here, we have mucus secretion. Mucus secretion. And this is very important. First of all, it, it makes them resistant. Second, in histology they give a red color with a stain called acid fast stain. So in microscopy they appear as red rods or bacilli like that. So this is very important for the testing for tuberculosis. And this is why also they're called acid fast bacilli. So Koch bacilli, acid fast bacilli or MTB, mycobacterium tuberculosis. A very important thing that we also need to know about these bacteria is that they are strictly aerobes. Aerobes means that they need oxygen to survive. Without oxygen, they die. They strictly need oxygen to survive. So these are very important characteristics of the bacteria that cause tuberculosis. So tuberculosis is an infectious contagious disease that currently is classified as an endemic even though it's estimated that there is around 2 billion people living with the bacteria of tuberculosis. But that doesn't mean that they, all of them, are active. Here's the thing, tuberculosis can be active or latent. It can be active or latent. The incubation period of TB is 2 to 12 weeks.
and when the person, a healthy person, and when a healthy person receives the bacteria throughout droplets, the most common way of transmission is droplets. So droplets through cough, talking, so on and so forth. When the person receives the bacteria, they go through the lungs through the airways through the lungs and they stay dormant the first infections of TB always occur in the lower lobes of the lungs the mechanism of infection we're gonna talk about in the next video but the point is when they reach through the lungs, there are um, autoimmune mechanisms in our body, in the respiratory system, and due to the turbulent flow at the entrance of the airways, most of the bacteria are forced to stick on the walls with the mucus to be expectorated, but because of the uh, rigidity of the walls of the mycobacterium tuberculosis and they are already are uh, mucobacteria they manage to survive and they go to the lungs and when they reach there there is an immune reaction with the phagocytes that attack those bacteria and this sort of inflammatory pattern is um, obvious after 2 to 12 weeks and this is the incubation period of tuberculosis tuberculosis can manifest as a pulmonary disease and it also after if it's very active it can spread to other parts of the body as well it can spread to the liver causing hepatitis it can go to the kidneys causing sterile urea which means that we have a lot of white blood cells in the kit in the urine production it can also spread to the cervical lymph nodes causing lymph adenitis so inflammation of the lymph nodes in the cervical region it can spread to the lumbar vertebrae causing POTS disease which is like arthritis so inflammation of the uh, inflammation in between the uh, lumbar vertebrae it can go to the adrenal glands causing Addison's disease Addison's disease leading to a lot of hormonal changes so tuberculosis is a very serious and a very important disease that we need to learn about next time we're going to talk about the evolution of the disease or how does the pulmonary uh, manifestation of tuberculosis occur throughout uh, the lungs. We're going to talk about um, primary and secondary tuberculosis. Uh, so that was our lesson for today. I hope it was easy. And until the next time, I thank you for watching and see you.
click here to subscribe in order to be notified when new medical video tutorials are uploaded and to check the older videos of medical tutorials and also high school tutorials.